I've climbed up to a mountain on the side of the frozen French canals. I'm here with my solar prototype that should be visible down there by the city of Fumei. It is winter here and I might be stuck. This is the perfect time to speak about the experience of traveling through the canals of Europe. What are the challenges, what are the benefits and why I would probably not do it again. Let's start with the positive. I have loved the journey so far. The scenery is absolutely beautiful. We have forests, cities, mountains, and the weather is usually very calm, which makes the journey on a solar yacht even more simple. The ranges are far more predictable, and the currents that so far have been very low, usually under one knot, one time at three and a half knot, are no problem either. We've been able to travel 30 to 50 nautical miles daily without any trouble, without having to sail literally the entire day. In winter time, there's always been a couple places where we've been able to charge up the batteries overnight and then we can continue the next day. The biggest problem is being limited by locks. You can't predict how long it takes, you can't predict if you need to wait for like two lock closures because there's cargo ships running there as well that may delay your journey significantly and that's one of the reasons why i'm still stuck here in the winter of france in winter time the lock operations are usually not at 100 percent meaning that if we have two or even three locks at the same location usually only one of them will be operational so a couple times we've had to wait for cargo ships to fill up the locks first, go up and then it goes down again. And then we, well, spent roughly 40 to 60 minutes just sitting there. Passing a lock, however, is very easy. We've had no problem whatsoever and I'm not really taking it seriously. I just drive forth, put one line at the front of the boat and put in reverse and turn the wheel. And that keeps me in place. That's the same method the barges use. They sometimes don't even attach themselves into the lock. They just put their motors and pushing the boat toward the side of the lock. As long as you have your fenders out, you're gonna be all good. So there's no concern whatsoever about the safety, about damaging your boat. I believe that if you make some mistakes, you really have to be not paying attention and i'm usually doing that and not paying attention i'm usually editing videos while i'm in the lock and still there's no problems so far before heading out on my journey my father and some other relatives were very fearful about the locks they told me that they are very hard rough concrete you're gonna damage your boat be very careful but uh, i'm not careful and uh, there's really no problems you just need two fenders on the side of my Helios 11 because the side is pretty straight you will only have two impact points on the entire hull usually normal boats are very rounded so that might make it slightly more difficult you need to have three or four fenders out it's also been quite easy to communicate with the men operating the locks usually you can find the numbers on Google map or on the website. I don't even have a radio and I've managed to have pretty much no trouble with the radio. Of course, it could be slightly easier because there's these signs on the side of the canals where they indicate the right channel for your radio phone. I'm from Finland. I don't speak German. I don't speak French. And still there's been no problem communicating with the people at the locks passing through the canals of Europe seems to be smooth sailing. I believe the biggest concern would be traveling in summertime, when there's a lot of boats, a lot of boats wanting to go through all of those locks, then you may want to take the sea route. Let's move over to the legal aspects. When you travel through the canals, especially on something crazy looking as the Helios 11, you're gonna draw a lot of attention and I've been stopped by the Coast Guard, by the police and they've simply checked all my paperwork and uh, been curious and then 
let me continue my journey. So all good, they've been very friendly, just good experiences so far. And what about the barges, the cargo ships that are heavy as mountains and they will not stop if you're in the way. These cargo ships were a bit scary in the first couple of days traveling through the canals, but they move very predictably. They will make sounds and shine the light on you if you're even slightly in the way. The canals are usually broad and most of the time they're also very deep all the way to the edges, which means that most of the time there's more than enough space for the barges to pass you or you to pass the barges. There's no trouble as long as you're even half awake. Nighttime cruising has actually been one of my favorite hobbies here. When there's barely any traffic, you either have the moonlight to illuminate your journey, or then there's street lamps, or just a flashlight. It's very simple and adventurous to travel like that. Many of you have also been asking how I plan my journeys, and the answer is very simple. I follow this image, and then I talk to the men operating the locks. That's enough. I ask, is this route open? What do you think about that? Where should I go? Is there a lot of upstream here? And they will tell everything. Obviously, all of that information is also available online, but this feels like a more human approach and makes for a great natural adventure. So why did I say I might regret entering the canals? Yeah, I've been delayed. I've not escaped the winter completely. Kind of stuck here now. The narrow parts of the canals close to the locks here in northern France, they are frozen and we have roughly like eight centimeters of ice currently. If I'd taken the sea route, I'd already be in the Mediterranean, but that's no problem. It's been a great adventure. I've avoided the large waves and the wind. And you know what? I've booked a plane. I'm going to the Mediterranean and I'm gonna test out different 3D models in the waves, measuring performance, measuring stability. And then I will make the decision of my next build. Will it be the Halo 13 swath design of a catamaran or just a extended monohull that will start acting more like a ship. Now I need to shoot this gorgeous scenery on the GoPro before it gets too late. I'm glad you watched this video so far. Stay tuned to the adventure by subscribing and as always don't forget to get out there.